Blue veins stood out like tracks on Granny's wrinkled hands, working tirelessly, kneading dough. How he loved the aroma of her baking. She would measure the ingredients, cupful by cupful. Then, before it was ready for the oven, she would take a knife, cutting a deep cross into the loaf. We would stand close by, waiting for our chance to prod the loaf. Then, and only then, would we get our treat. A big enamel mug of fresh, lumpy buttermilk. That will put hairs on your chest, she would tell us. But it never did. My sister was well glad of that. The woods ring to the sound of birdsong. Joy in all creatures, great and small. Will they ever know the pleasure they give to humankind? So the conversation began following an uncomfortable pause. Once you're not thinking that a particular situation is an obstacle to going forward, then it isn't. He spoke in gentle tones. I have walked through this world alone all these years. Never in my wildest dreams did I visualize this outcome. He filled his pipe giving himself pause for thought. She sat opposite, eyes, pools of sadness. Since I was old enough to be my own boss, I have pursued this cause, she spoke in whispers. My heart has been disturbed all these years, journeying this life. Silence and a deeper silence followed. I feel like someone else, like I don't belong here, she said, after what seemed like an eternity. In the calm of music from within the confines of the cafe, with voice a tremble, he replied, this morning you returned like an upturned jewel. I am reunited with my daughter and I with my father. Hallelujah. I can't delete the pictures from my phone, even though you beg me to. It's as if you're desperate to forget what we were, like I meant nothing at all. My heart still jumps when my telephone dings, Praying you've finally given in to that sensible voice in your head. It can be our secret. Let us meet in our old haunting ground, bumming smokes from the regulars. Nobody need bother us there. Probably. But unfortunately, this is just a poem. Written for you, but you'll never know it. Only the few who bother to watch and stay. They'll get to see my heart break away. Maybe it's best we move on. I'll just pretend my pain's all gone. Cosplay like some handsome man on the town. Even if it's just a game. Sitting alone with my back to the bar. Trying my best to forget you were the one. Drunk conversations never help anyway. I always end up chatting with myself. Can't even make a new friend. Some things are better kept from strangers. Because that's all we are now. If you could see the one across my right breast, you'd think it was a smile, a puckered white curve like the crescent of a moon stitched tightly to the fabric of my flesh. It might be drawn by the tip of a pirate sword, or so my son once told me. The villain aimed to pierce my beating heart, missed his spot and left a scarlet slash, vivid as a raspberry ripple streak in our favorite ice cream. If you could touch them, the skin would shiver recalling fears like claws of black-winged birds perched upon my shoulders, singing their familiars. If you could hear them, if you could hear them, they'd speak a fragile kind of sorrow, slowly turning corners. Not a scream, 
but a hush, not a flame but a flicker of what once was. Burning a witch is always a waste of time. Wood. Witch. Burning a witch proves she is not a witch, but pure. Burn a witch and the flames dance. She might scream, harmonizing the heat, but she will not burn. Witches always already burn with magic, knowledge, desire, will. So do not waste your wood or incinerate the innocent. Harbour Coat A safe house, second womb, you would be there waiting, the concrete playground hard, primitive as granite beneath our feet. I never knew your name, never needed to, just the knowledge that you'd be there. Your coat would open in the beat of an angel's wings to let me in always. The honey scent of your long red hair flowing down over my face like summer rain. I would breathe you in, savour the everlasting arm of innocence, its warm embrace. When all the world busied itself running from destiny's shadow, we buried ourselves in silence, planted our feet like roots in the ground. Then time would trip over. It felt like some great waterfall at the edge of the world, spilling out into the unknown, taking us with it, falling endlessly, inevitably, back into the safety of each other's arms. Ice melting in our beating hearts, I felt only the outline of your body, its solidity in real terms as it broke away, leaving me with a memory warm in the palm of my hand, a river flowing through all eternity, foliated with two autumn leaves that will find each other and drift apart relentlessly, patting beneath a canopy of stars. The world is poised as if in fragile balance at the brink of something new. And yet the music is as ancient as time. Ferns are silent by the riverbank where buds of golden celandine are not quite ready to sing. But tiny sprigs of green arise to punctuate the limbs of saplings. Like lines of quavers that await the dancing, birds announce their melodies of light. An orchestra is getting into tune and the audience is spellbound. A longed for oratorio is ready to begin. I line up the coin with the horse in the distance. The embossed stallion is as still as I can hold the image. But the grey mare is content to let me compare tarnished effigy to her powerful breath. A shift of wind makes light of the coarse hair. She would not be censored with a blinker hood. The coin glints just now, slave to the sun's empire rising and setting. When I found it trodden in the dirt, I had to rub it to make out the design. I spin the horse and harp, hinting at the music of the past. The mare has a kink in her gait that no amount of training could correct. Many have been shot for less. The evening's warmth is in her flank, woven through with rivers of mottled white and black. As a result of foreign father brought to the stud to dominate, to propagate the germ of pure bloodiness. 
I throw the coin into the space. She has galloped over. Let her trample it again. Someone else can catalogue it. I can still see her mother in the way she holds herself, unadorned with brass buckle, leather reins of gnashing bit. She clears the fence through speed or strength, but how she acts on the going, as something new and free in ancient field, galloping towards the horizon. We can take the train together. We have to go in the same direction anyway. My phone number, in case you can't make it. I sat down at the window against the direction of travel. There were benches and there were a few of us. He sat down opposite me. The line had been drawn anyway and the whole ride I watched that imaginary thread between us bobbing along to the rhythm of the tracks. It felt casual. We strolled through the galleries and took in the city. After a while, I dragged the line behind me like a thread, constantly resisting the urge to let it go. We can take the train together. I'll give you my number just in case. There were many of us. I sat down with my back to later. He faced me, the line between us, rocking to the rhythm of the tracks. As the sun paves a fiery path for the moon, we confront the chill head on. Laughter bubbling with the spray, we pause thoughts of all gravity. My hand finds a familiar path in yours as you guide me away from the shore. The glint of lunacy shines through our eyes while the world crashes. Chattering teeth and sea salt smiles, wading through it all together. Countless sunsets have come before us, but never so sweet as tonight. As Atlantic waves wash over us, I pray that we always preserve this, us, as we are now, content to forget that all tides retreat. Alive in you, in a way so true, is the one we all know and love. Arisen is their spirit, in silence we can hear it, in ever-present stillness we become. Aware of the chair that might be empty, and his remaining crosswords undone, his clothes from the last wash, now only on the verge of being dry, his unread copies of the mirror, the herald and the sun, empty, undone, nearly dry and unread. This is how we feel today, we and you and I, but not him, for he does not die out of the world as the world has died out of him. And thank God. As I wrote this in bed, I thought about him and his crosswords, white lines, black lines, cubes and crosses, such as life, but such a thing as life won't prevent our words from crossing each other's paths.